One of the things I wanted to talk about today is in the new release that just came out a couple of days ago, May of 2025, um, something changed in the polar aligned deviation. And I wanted to talk about that. I've done some looking into what it does and how we do it. There wasn't a whole lot of instructions in the app, so I wanted to do a little experiment with that today. So um, I've connected to my C star here. You can see in the top right hand corner, I'm on EQ mode. When I click on my C star, I scroll down to the advanced features, and then I'm going to go to mount mode. And then you'll see that I'm at the EQ mode where I can switch it to the alt azimuth mode or the EQ mode. And then it has those alignment things in the bottom of that screen. Um, I'm at 41 degrees, so my C star is currently pointed at Polaris, or the North Pole. And so we want to click Get Polar Aligned Deviation. And when I do, that's what has changed in the app. I'm going to take a screenshot of this, just for the video's sake. And I wasn't really sure what all of these things meant, and it just says, please select your scope point before getting polar aligned deviation and ensure that there is no obstruction within a 30 degree point to the sky area. Well, I didn't really know what that meant. You know, mine, if I open mine to do the polar aligned deviation, um, that's where I want it to take those three images to get the polar align alignment for the scope. And so I wanted to do an experiment today and show the differences of what all of those look like once we're on our scope so that you can, you know, these pictures are kind of vague. I wish they had some directions on there, like showed the pole or pointing to Polaris or something, but they don't. So I'm going to do an experiment today and do um, all of these different angles so that you can determine which one is best for your C star. So we're gonna get started. Okay, so what I've done is I've set up my C star and put it on my tripod, angling it towards Polaris or the North Star. And what I'm going to do is, just for disclosure, I am recording with my iPhone, but I'm actually going to run the C star with my tablet because I'm gonna be recording and it won't let me do both at the same time. And so what I'm going to do is I want to do that polar aligned deviation at all of those options and angles that are in the, the C star app that just came out with the new update so that we can see the difference on those. So this one is just set up. It has the power button pointed to the sky and it is angled and tilted towards Polaris. Um, so I'm going to go to my, C star. I'm going to click on, scroll down to the advanced features, do the mount mode, and you'll see it's at 41 degrees. And then I'm going to do polar aligned deviation, and I'm going to start at number one. And so this is telling the C star not to go straight up and down, it needs to be angled a little bit. So I'm going to start that. And what happens is the C star opens its arm, it's turning it around. And I'll take it a second to get open. And so you see that the arm is not going up still. So it reached its point a lot sooner, but now it's got to rotate around to the sky. So if you're in a in some kind of an apartment or something where that you can't get straight up and down to do the polar aligned deviation, this is the angle now that you're going to start your polar aligned deviation. And it stopped right there. That would is where it would collect its first point. So you're you're not quite straight up and down. And so that's that degrees. I'm going to cancel that one so that we can compare them. Maybe I'll even take some screenshots so I can include those in the app. So you may see some little 
things in there. All right, so now I'm gonna click Get Polar Align Deviation again. Now it looks like I'm gonna have to go out of that mode. It looks like we're gonna have to close the arm and start over, otherwise it, it thinks that we're in the middle of it, which we really kind of were. So I'm gonna go in there, try again. Yeah, I'm going to have to go in, out and completely close the arm. And then we'll start it again. And so that's the angle that we're starting with. So now it's going to close that arm. And it's rotating back down to the closed position. And it's going to take a few seconds to get it there. Uh, maybe 20, 30 seconds. And so it's rotating back to its alignment to Polaris so that the power button is pointed up to the sky and it's in the neutral position or the starting position. And so then it's gone. It's almost there. Once it gets there, we will do it again and we will do the polar align deviation for the next one. All right, so let's click on the C star, scroll down to the advanced feature Scroll down to mount mode. It's in the EQ mode. Get polar align and we're gonna do the number two. And now we're gonna start that. So you see now it's rotating back and opening up. Um, from the diagram, it looks like the arm will go a little bit higher in the sky than at number one. So it's probably somewhere halfway in between straight up and down and what number one was. So you see it already, you can tell that it's looking a little higher in the sky. And this is number two on that polar align deviation. And so there it is. So that's where it would stop and take that very first image to do the polar align deviation. Now I've got to go back and we will close the arm again. And then we'll do number three. I think maybe I'll timestamp these in the video. So if you don't want to watch all this opening and closing for all of the points, you don't have to. So that you can see the difference. Oh darn it, I should have taken a screenshot of number two. I guess maybe I'll do that after, after we're done here. And then I can put them all up on the screen at the end of the video or something. All right, so we're there again. Almost closed. I'm going to go down to the advanced features. Go to the mount mode. Wait for it to completely stop turning. That power button is back on the top again. So we're in the default position. I'll click get polar align deviation. We're going to do number three this time. So let's start doing that one. So it's going to open there. And I know this takes a little bit of time, but it's, it's harder to start and stop the videos and then paste them into the software to splice them all together than it is to just let it run. So since it's a short time, I'll let it run. So this one, you can see that the arm went a little higher than it did on number two. And of course, number one. So this one, by the time it turns all the way around, it's basically pointing straight up in the sky. So that's where that one is starting. And I need to remember, and I'll take a screenshot so that we can use that to tell us which one we're looking at. Okay, I'm going to cancel that one, go back and close the arm again. And then as soon as it gets close to being closed, I'll start it up for number four. So this is helpful for those people that have obstructions uh, above them. So they can't get the polar align deviation before this app update because they're straight up in the sky was obstructed 
whether it be power poles or trees or an overhang of a patio or whatever the reason would be. Um, it just, this is giving us more options to tell it where to start getting its polar alignment. All right, it's almost done. I'll click on my C star, go to the advanced features, EQ mode, get polar aligned deviation and we'll do number four next. So it's, it's at the starting point. I'll click start again. And this one, it should open higher. And in fact, um, it should go more to the north than it did at one and two. Three is basically straight up. Four is a little degree to the north of straight up. Hope that makes sense. And you can see outside what I'm contending with. I know a lot of you are contending with that too. So it, this is one I could do indoors. So this one, you can't even see the lens from this angle. The lens is up there on the top. So it is pointing a little bit more to the north to start its polar aligned deviation. So there's number four. Let me get a screenshot of that one. And then we will cancel that one. And then we will go back and close the arm again and do the last one. I know there's probably fancier ways to do all this recording, um, but you know, you get what you get with my videos. <laughs> I do need to do a lens cleaning video. That's gonna be coming up soon. I just haven't taken the time to film it. And so once that gets close to its starting point again, we'll do the last one. And then what I will do is um, I will go back and do that number two and get a screenshot. I won't film that because nobody wants to see that again. Uh, but I will go back and get that screenshot. And then I will post the screenshots of all five of the positions and put them at the end of the video. All right, clicking on the advanced features and the mount mode, getting a line deviation. We're going to go with number five this time and starting. And this one should be pointed pretty far north, as far north as it's going to allow us to do to get this um, polar line deviation starting point. <coughs> Excuse me. So you see the arm is opening quite a bit more and it's going pretty fast. And it's going to go past that top point. So it's going to go a lot more north than the, even the number four did. So that's what it looks like from the side and from the top. So you can see that it's pointing a lot more towards the north. So that is number five. And let me take a screenshot of that one. And then we will cancel that. So I will, what I will do is I'll put all of these still shots of the different angles um, up on the next screen so that you can compare them and decide which ones you need to use. You can use any of them that you want to. It's not like you're in a certain position and you can't use this one or number two, for example. The only reason you would do this is to avoid obstacles that are in your way. And so um, let me go back, close the arm. So you can choose which one works best for you. If you have neighbor's lights that are to the south of you, maybe you don't want to do the polar aligned deviation pointing it at number one to the south, or same goes for the north. If straight up isn't an option because of an overhang or an awning or trees or whatever, you may wanna choose either five or one. And so that's the difference on these polar line deviations. And I'll put those all on the next screen. Thanks for watching. Here's the still images of all of those um, polar line deviation settings. Uh, it starts in the top left as number one, the top center is number two, top right is number three, 
The bottom left is number four and the bottom right is number five. I've input the red lines just so that you can see the degree. I wasn't really scientific on taking these images and still shots. So the sea stars might be off a little just because I took them from slightly different angles, but they're, they're pretty close to enough to give you a good idea of, of what the lens starting point for that polar aligned deviation imaging is. And so this is the still images. Hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. Hope it was clarifying and uh, will enable you to figure out where you need to do your polar aligned deviation. Anyway, thanks for watching. We're wishing clear skies for everybody. Thanks for watching.